Hi guys, welcome back to another Scout the Defender YouTube video and I'm sat within Scout before it gets sent over to the guys at LR Motors to try and diagnose what's going on with the heating issues. But before then, I put out a post on my Instagram and over on my YouTube, inviting you guys to ask any questions that you have about Scout, about either channel, and I'm gonna be answering them in today's video. So a bit more of a chilled one, but it'd be good to kind of catch up with you guys and uh, answer some of those burning questions. If you don't already, go and follow me over on Instagram. I share a lot of content over there uh, and do a lot of polls and questions and get your guys' feedback and they directly feed into the videos. So if you're not following me, go check me out on Instagram and we'll get right into it. I'm armed with loads of your guys' questions, so we'll go through them. And if you've got any other burning questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to do another one of these videos because it's quite nice to have a bit of a chill and just catch up with you guys. So let's get into it. So I was inundated with questions, so I thought I would just go top to bottom through my Instagram and through my YouTube and just answer some of the questions. Right, so let's get into it. Uh, first job from uh, Jack or Boris the Defender. What is your profession? So sadly, my profession has nothing to do with Land Rovers or Defenders whatsoever. Uh, I'm actually a graphic designer. Obviously it helps with some of the Instagram, the YouTube stuff. It helps me edit, uh, having all the knowledge from before but uh, my day job has nothing to do with Land Rovers, although I wish obviously it had more involvement. Defenders are very much a hobby, uh, something I enjoy spending my time, you know, fixing up and, and exploring in in my spare time. Uh, but yeah, Defenders do not actually play any part of my role in my day-to-day -day, uh, graphic designing career. Uh, I also had a couple more questions from Boris, or they actually had loads, but I'm only gonna answer a few uh, to give everyone else a bit of time. But uh, any trips planned for 2022? So although there's no trips kind of in concrete, we've got lots of ideas of things that we want to do. So one thing that myself and my girlfriend want to do is learn to surf. So we're thinking of doing a road trip down south, spending a, you know, a week, two weeks down south, learning to surf and also you know camping road trip in Scout. I think that'd be a really cool thing uh, to do and also be great to document on the channel. Um, we also really want to do uh, the North Coast 500. We had it planned for um, the first year of lockdown. Obviously that didn't happen. Maybe we'll get to do that again this year. So up 500 miles around the North Coast of Scotland. Again, a great adventure in Scout. Uh, so there's a few more modifications I want to do before we, we go and do that, but that would be a really exciting trip. Um, and then other things, I'm planning to attend a lot of shows this year or Land Rover shows this year. So uh, Billing, Peterborough, uh, we hope to be at both of those, so hopefully we'll see some of you guys, you subscribers here and on Instagram, uh, at some of the shows, so come over and say hello. Um, so those are kind of the, the things that are floating around in our heads at the moment, but I'm sure other things will probably crop up throughout the year too. One final question from Boris, and that is, what is the next big upgrade? I don't actually know, to be honest, because I have I have basically a list, as I'm sure all Land Rover owners do, of all of the things that they want to do to their truck. It's just working out kind of priority and what I want to do next. So there's a few interior things. I mean, just looking now, I'd really love to fit a double DIN system, uh, upgrade the speakers as well. Uh, as probably you're all aware, in Defenders, the sound system is pretty poor. Um, it'd be really good to upgrade that, especially if we're going to be doing longer road trips uh, to have some nice tunes blaring would be would be good. Um, other things, uh, sorting out the exhaust system. I'm really tempted to do a straight through uh, exhaust, uh, removing kind of EGR valves and that kind of thing and mechanically just tidying up some of the, the engine issues that I've been having. Um, but I think probably the next biggest upgrade yet will be the double DIN uh, system inside. Next question, Harvey from Peak District 4x4. If you guys don't follow him over on Instagram, go check him out. He's got a great channel and a great truck. Uh, he has asked, what car did you have before a Defender? So prior to owning Scout, I uh, worked in London, uh, so I actually didn't have a car at all. So I relied on the buses and the trains, and obviously for a person that loves cars, that's not ideal. Um, but yeah, I lived without a car for five, six years. So before that was actually my first car. Uh, and I'll put a picture up somewhere on screen, was a Renault Clio. I think it was like a 1.2. Uh, I put like, it had sports seats in it. I tried to change the wheels. I, I turned into a bit of a chav with it, but it was like my dream car when I, <laughs> yeah, when I set out uh, learning to drive. Um, so yeah, that was my first car. I sold that and then went carless for a few years before finally uh, making the move to buy Scout, which obviously 
uh, I don't regret one bit. So yeah, Clio uh, 1.2 was the, the first car. Right, next question. Now, sorry if I pronounce some of the, uh, I guess, Instagram handles wrong, uh, but I've got a question from Rai Young. Rai Young? Uh, what are defenders like as a daily driver? So, I think you have to really consider what uh, defender you're going to buy. If, if it is going to be a daily, you may want to think about the different, different models. So, for example, Scout is a 2011 XS uh, 2.4, so that's a Puma engine. So, most people say that the Pumas are much more comfortable to drive and to use as a daily driver. Obviously, it's got the XS refinement, so it's got uh, heated windows, heated seats. Uh, the 2.4 engines, the Puma engines are a bit more refined. Uh, they're actually like transit van engines, but um, compared to like a TD5 or a 300 TDI, they're a little bit quieter. Um, they're probably a bit stronger in terms of like longer journeys. Uh, so as a daily driver, as Scout is for me, um, I, I think it's great. The, the biggest downfalls, I guess, with a 110, uh, parking is an issue. Also, if you live in areas like London that have got um, low emission zones, the 2.4 isn't ULES compliant. So uh, you may have to you know, spend X amount a day uh, going into some of those areas. Um, but I can say that I love having uh, the Defender as the daily. Down the line, there'll probably be um, a 90 coming at some point, uh, which will probably be even more dailyable. Uh, or I'll get a kind of a, a second car to stop piling the miles onto Scout. Um, but as I've had it as you know daily for yeah 12 well more than 12 months you know to almost two years now, uh, I actually find them really dailyable, um, and I don't find any of the issues that most people complain about to be a problem. The the joy of I guess driving around in a Defender offsets that. So uh, good question. Sam underscore Chev 92. What roof rack are you using? Now this is actually one of the questions that I get so often over on Instagram uh, and also in the comments down below. So uh, the Scout roof rack is a Land Rover Genuine uh, Expedition rack. So obviously you have the, the rack itself and then that lends down into the uh, ladder system as well. I think from a visual point of view, it looks great, um, but there are a few downfalls. So it's actually not that usable. It's not got kind of flat slats all the way across which means that um, fitting a rooftop tent is basically impossible unless I you know, really like fashion or manufacture something. Uh, and it can be a bit noisy as well because of the tubes, the wind whistling through it. So although I love the aesthetic, uh, in the future there may be a change to the roof rack only really because I really want a rooftop tent um, and that won't support it. So going round in my head, trying to decide, um, what roof rack I would go for, probably like a flat rack of some sort. But I keep putting it off because I love the aesthetic of the genuine rack. But yeah, loads of people ask me that question. So yeah, genuine Land Rover roof rack. They come up on eBay, Gumtree sometimes, um, and they're often at the shows as well, but they can be quite expensive now because they're quite hard to come by. So um, yeah, just keep scouring uh, eBay and Gumtree for them. Um, so yeah, that, that's the roof rack. Andrew underscore Lincoln underscore zero eight. If you were to build Scout again, what would you do? Or would you do anything differently? So first of all, great question. I guess the truth is, yes, there's probably some things that I would change, not a lot. Um, but when I got Scout, I was eager to, I guess, customize it and make it my own. So there's probably a few early modifications that uh, I guess I've rushed into. Um, the first thing would be uh, the wheels. I got offered a good deal on the black sawtooth, so I just put them on. I, obviously, originally it was running um, the standard boost alloys, and I wanted to kind of black out the car. But now thinking about it, I feel like I may have rushed into that decision. Um, there's loads of kind of other things that I've been considering. I put a post out actually on my Instagram um, last week. I had photoshopped or mocked up some of those uh, other tire and, and wheel options. I think the wheels are the thing that I'd probably change or I wouldn't necessarily rush into making the sawtooth decision again. The other, um, I guess, modification that I made that uh, in haste was uh, blacking out all the grill, taking off the original um, standard Land Rover grill and uh, fitting a Zunsport grill. I don't regret that as much as when I painted the lights around and I painted other little bits body color. I stupidly thought that the car was Santorini black um, 
Uh, it was actually sold as a Santorini Black Defender, but it's actually Sumatra Black, which means that kind of when the light hits it, it's got more of a blue fleck in it. So there's a few bits that I've actually painted on the car that are the wrong color. Even actually the back door, uh, the previous owner must have either fitted a new door or had it resprayed. That is Santorini Black, and it's something that drives me mad. As a graphic designer, when you see it, you, when the light hits it, you can see the two shades. Um, so maybe something else to fix uh, in the new year, but. Yeah, those are the, I guess, the main things that are, are the things that I would probably change uh, in the future. Rehan Saatchi, uh, are defenders reliable? Up until recently, I would say yes. I have, in the two years of ownership, only broken down once, and that was literally after I first bought it. The turbo failed, uh, and it was all under warranty and got fixed. After that, I've had smaller issues, but I've been able to identify them. So, for example, the radiator um, got a leak. Uh, that was easily fixed um, and there's been other like small minor issues like, but nothing that has really affected the reliability too much so up until recently I would say fine obviously uh, recent events with the whole overheating issue um, it's slightly less reliable and it makes me a little bit nervous about longer journeys whereas previously I would you know go up and down to London quite a lot and not worry one bit uh, hopefully, once I get this sent to LR Motors, the guys have a look, it'll probably only be a, hopefully, fingers crossed, a small issue. Um, so I would say that in general, they're fairly reliable. You hear a lot of horror stories, and I think it probably depends on, you know, ensuring that you do your research before you buy a particular Defender, doing a proper kind of uh, routine service and keeping it all kind of in check. But I would say they're more reliable than you hear online, but don't be surprised if every now and then you get a bit of a wobble. Next question from e.wilden on Instagram. Uh, what was wrong with Scout? Uh, and a similar question from Mark underscore Sidaway. Why did Scout end up on the back of the recovery truck? So I'll answer both of these at the same time. So Scout ended up on the back of the recovery truck because uh, going uphill, it started to overheat. Um, I could see the, the temperature climbing and then all of a sudden it rocketed up. It went into limp mode uh, and we just didn't get any power at all let it cool down, got going again on some flat roads, and again, it was just banging straight up uh, to, I guess, high levels, overheating, steam coming out, um, and then, yeah, into limp mode, and it's basically undrivable, so it had to be recovered. In terms of what was wrong, still not 100% sure. You'll see in a previous video, uh, I had a little look under the engine, I inspected several kind of things that people have recommended me to check out, split hoses, um, like coolant leaks, radiator leaks, I couldn't see anything wrong. Um, when I had the radiator leak before, it was really noticeable that it was losing loads of coolant. This time that wasn't the case. Um, so there's a few things that I suspect it may be. Maybe the EGR valve is clogged. It may be a temperature sensor, but I'm now gonna just send it to the guys at LR Motors to, they know their stuff more than I do. Uh, and hopefully we'll have an answer and I'll document it on the channel and I'll let you guys know when it's uh, back up and working. Uh, at Lucy the Land Rover, what are your favorite Instagram accounts for inspiration? Ah, oh, well, Lucy the Land Rover is actually one of the first accounts that I followed even before I bought Scout. Uh, so I'd actually shout yourself out as one of the channels that I regularly uh, go back and look at what you guys are doing with your truck. And obviously you've got a few other Landys that have joined the collection, which is really exciting. Um, Boris the Defender, again, really cool uh, like lifestyle Instagram channel, uh, kitted out. Uh, 110 to like a camper uh, overlander really cool to follow his journey he's also on youtube so check him out uh, island rovers is a big channel uh, and again loads of defenders and it's cool how he's made his mark and modified them to each have their own character so that's a really cool channel um, and then there's loads of other channels that i regularly follow so peak district 4x4 uh, nelly the 90 Loads of channels actually on Instagram that I, I really draw like inspiration from. And I think that's probably one of the best things having bought Scout is that kind of the community that comes with it, owning a Defender. There's obviously the obligatory wave when you drive past people, but also over on socials, everyone's really like, I guess, super keen to help you out if you've got issues. The meetups are great where you can meet like-minded people that are just all about adventure and traveling their Defenders. So um, loads of channels that I follow. I've not really answered that question, but um, yeah, if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to go over and check me out and then you can see who I'm following. Um, uh, but yeah, there's loads of really cool channels for inspiration. 
Uh, final question, Defender and me, what is your favorite upgrade? This is really tricky. There's loads of things, I guess, that I've done that I really wanted to do. The rear drawer system has been, I guess, a game changer in removing the rear seats in the 110 for my lifestyle. I never use the back seats and the drawer system really cleans up the back of the truck and means that when we go on doing our adventures this year, it's much more usable space. That's been a big thing. Uh, changing the steering wheel. So obviously the bus like steering wheel before, changing that down to the, like the motor liter, smaller wheel, improved drivability. Uh, and alongside that, doing like engine modifications like remaps and intercoolers have generally made it much more pleasurable to drive. And then we've got some of the ORE bits, so the rear wheel carrier, um, protecting the rear door, and also the light parts, lights. There's so many, I've not even named a single favorite, but I guess collectively I had an idea of what I wanted to do with Scout, and over 2021, I've basically done the majority of those things um, cosmetically. There's a few mechanical things that I probably want to investigate or improve, which uh, 2022 I'll, I'll look at doing. And obviously the interior in terms of the sound and the double din uh, are things that I want to do this year. But no favourite modification, um, but collectively really happy kind of with what I've done and the direction I've taken Scout over the last kind of 12 months. So there we go, they are some of the questions that you guys answered over on YouTube and on Instagram. So thank you to everyone that left a comment. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. I was just bombarded with so many. I tried to just sample some of the ones that were, uh, I guess, more common that people had asked. Uh, please be sure if you've got any further questions to leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to do another one of these catch up videos. Um, and also subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out. As I've said before, 2022, 2022 i'm really trying to push the channel even further uh deliver more content so subscribe to follow the journey and also like because uh, it really helps out the channel if you're enjoying the videos and um yeah i'll be sure to catch you in the next video where hopefully we'll have an update on scout uh, and we'll be back on the road doing more adventures so i'll see you then